Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There are so many Therapy dinosaurs. Oh my goodness. Um, how are we going to group all the Therapod dinosaurs? Welcome to the Natural History of Dinosaurs. My name is Benjamin Berger. I'm a paleontologist at Utah State University teaching in the heart of Utah's dinosaur country in Vernal. In this video, we're going to quickly group the various Therapod dinosaurs into various groupings based on their phylogenetic relationships to each other. Now, let me preface this video to say that there are many ways in which the theropod dinosaurs have been grouped. And there is considerable debate in the literature of who is most closely related to whom. But what I want to do is I want to introduce uh, to you the basic groupings that are supported by the majority of researchers. I also don't want to introduce lots of names and terms to serve only to establish each branch on this cladogram or tree. So what I've done is I've picked the 10 groupings to know. These are the 10 groupings of theropod dinosaurs that are the major groups. And they're the good ones to commit to memory. This is the easiest group which encapsulates all of the dinosaurs that we are going to discuss in this video, as well as modern birds. This large monophyletic group is characterized by bipedal dinosaurs, many of which are carnivorous dinosaurs, meat-eating dinosaurs. Number two, the Celiophysoidae. Now, this is the oldest group of dinosaurs. They're known from the late Triassic and earliest Jurassic. The best known of the Celiophysoidea is a little dinosaur called Celiophysis, which is well known in the American Southwest, but has also been found in Africa. Celiophysis was about the size of a large goose, and it featured a long skull with a slender body, lots of vertebrae, now these little dinosaurs are common during the late Triassic in the Chin Li Formation, where their skeletons have been found at Ghost Ranch, New Mexico. Other Coelophysis specimens have been found in northeastern Utah, in the Navajo Formation, um, and these were all small carnivorous dinosaurs. The other famous Coelophysoid um, is the larger carnivorous dinosaur, Dilophosaurus. Now, Dilophosaurus had a crest on its skull, and it was a more moderately sized dinosaur. It's known from the early Jurassic Cayenta formation in Arizona. And many trackways of this age have been attributed to Dilophosaurus, including those track dinosaur trackways that are exhibited um, at the St. George Dinosaur Trackway site in southwestern Utah. But Dilophosaurus is likely most famous from a short scene that was in the original Jurassic Park movie. Um, it's when this dinosaur eats the character played by Wayne Knight. Uh, in the movie, it's depicted, Dilophosaurus is depicted as this large frill, and it's got the poison that spits out. <laughs> now, <clears throat> there's no scientific evidence uh, for this, Dilophosaurus was likely a cursorial um, predator, fast-moving running predator, which hunted um, some of the larger dinosaurs and related vertebrates that lived during the early Jurassic. All right, the next group of theropoda are the Neoceratosauria. Number three, the Neoceratosauria. The Neoceratosauria group um, rose during the late Jurassic time, but during the Cretaceous, they became one of the most dominant southern hemisphere groups of carnivorous theropods. The late Jurassic Ceratosaurus, which is known from Utah, Colorado, and Portugal, was a large carnivorous dinosaur which featured a horn crest on the skull. It's found in the same deposits as Allosaurus, and it's distinguished from Allosaurus by having that large nasal crest which is similar to what you find in Dilophosaurus. Now, during the Cretaceous uh, period, the Neoceratosauria are found only in Gondwanaland, in South America, 
in Antarctica, in Africa, and Madagascar. Now these are grouped into a single family called the Albiosaurus. Now the late Cretaceous Neoceratosaurian dinosaurs include some really unusual forms, including the horned Carnotaurus, Carnotaurus from the late uh, Cretaceous of South America. Now this is a large dinosaur that had a large horn positioned above its post-orbital bone. And it had, it had short, a short, weird, weird snout. The arms were also reduced, giving this dinosaur really unusual limb proportions. One of the best preserved dinosaurs from Antarctica is the early Jurassic Crylophosaurus, which had a crest on its skull, which kind of flared up like this weird hairdo thing. Another member of the Neoceratosaurian uh, is the large carnivorous theropod dinosaur from Madagascar named Majungasaurus, which is known from a well-preserved skeleton from the late Cretaceous. Now, Majungasaurus, like Carnotaurus, had tiny little arms, which featured four small fingers. Um, these arms were likely not used for much gripping, and it's strange um, to see that many of these large theropod dinosaurs actually reduced their forearms. Not all did this, but some did. Number four, the Tenaria. The Tenaria are a group, or a node, I guess, uh, to the next branch um, of the theropod dinosaur tree. And as such, they include the following dinosaurs and birds that we'll discuss next. The first branch off the Tenaria tree are two really interesting dinosaurs, Boronyx and Spinosaurus. Boronyx is known from the early Cretaceous of England and Spain. It was initially discovered by its large finger claw, which was discovered by an amateur fossil hunter in 1983. The skeleton was described by Alan Trigrig and Angela Milner. Now, Boronyx features a long, narrow snout, which held long, narrow teeth. The hands were equipped with large claws. It had a large skull in proportion to the rest of its skeleton, and the shape of the teeth indicates that Boronyx may have fed on fish and lived in the water. Boronyx is closely related to Spinosaurus, which is known from North Africa during the late Cretaceous. Now, Spinosaurus was a very large dinosaur with tall spines that extended from the neural arches of the dorsal vertebrae. Spinosaurus was discovered in the western deserts of Egypt by the German paleontologist Ernst Stromer. The bones of Spinosaurus were put on display in Munich, Germany, but sadly, they were destroyed during an air bombing of the city during World War II. The only known fossilized bones of Spinosaurus were lost, which included uh, the large dorsal vertebrae, the anterior half of a denary bone, a scapula, and some various other bones. Now, recently, new discoveries of Spinosaurus have been found in North Africa, which helped to shed the light on the creature. Most notably is the hip and hind legs, which you now know, which were much smaller than presumed for a creature this size. It's believed that Spinosaurus may have been semi-aquatic to support those smaller limbs and maybe use that giant tail and sail to help it swim in the water to catch fish with its long, narrow teeth, much like a crocodile. In fact, what is known of the skull of both Boronyx and Spinosaurus show that they were very crocodilian in appearance. Now, the next node on the theropod tree of dinosaurs is a group called the Avi theropoda. The Avi means birds, and this next group of theropods are the dinosaurs that are regarded as being more closely related to modern birds um, than the dinosaurs we've discussed so far. Number five, the Avi theropoda. 
Now the AV Therapoda are is somewhat of a of a useful group. Um, it encapsulates the late Jurassic Allosaurus and all other more advanced theropods. Although early cladograms would include the Abelosaurus in this group. In this respect, maybe it's best to think of this group, the AV Therapoda, as a group that's more closely related to birds. Although there are a few, very few characteristics that really distinguish this group from the other theropods. Number six, Carnosauria. Carnosauria. The Carnosauria are a late Jurassic branch off the AV Theropoda. Its most iconic member is the late Jurassic carnivorous dinosaur Allosaurus, which is known from the western part of the United States and is a common dinosaur here in Utah. Now Allosaurus is well known for many skeletons discovered in the late Jurassic Morrison formation. One of the more famous specimens of Allosaurus is Big Al on display in Laramie, Wyoming at the University of Wyoming. Now this specimen was the subject of a Walking with Dinosaurs BBC documentary called The Ballad of Big Al that followed the hypothetical life of this particular individual of Allosaurus. Allosaurus was a large climax predator of the late Jurassic, sharing the landscape with giant sauropod dinosaurs like Apatosaurus and Diplodocus, as well as Stegosaurus and the smaller prey Camptiosaurus. It was the lion of the late Jurassic of North America, although specimens are known from Portugal as well. In Asia, a very similar looking dinosaur is known, Yangchungosaurus, which is very similar to Allosaurus in both size and form. Now the next group of theropod dinosaurs is a node which includes some of the most famous dinosaurs of all time, the Surliosauria. But this group had a very humble beginning during the late Jurassic. Number seven, Surliosauria. Now during the late Jurassic, the first member of the Surliosauria is the tiny dinosaur Scuriamimus. It's a tiny feathered dinosaur discovered in the late Jurassic of Germany. And its name means squirrel mimic. It has, it's about the size of a squirrel. This tiny little dinosaur was described in 2012, and it had dino fuzz, a sort of proto feather along its back and tail. Now this tiny little dinosaur was ancestral to the giant saurosaurians that would arise during the Cretaceous. But during the Jurassic, these guys were pretty small still. By the early Cretaceous, these in Asia, these smaller dinosaurs were getting slightly larger, about chicken size with the little dinosaur Dilong. And during the early Cretaceous, these little chicken-like uh, carnivorous dinosaurs would eventually evolve into the supersized Tyrannosaurus by the end of the Cretaceous. Now the end Cretaceous is characterized by giant Suriosaurians. In Canada and Montana, we have Albertosaurus. In Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado and Utah, we have the iconic Tyrannosaurus rex. And in Asia, we have Tarbosaurus. These large Suriosaurians evolved from smaller chicken-sized dinosaurs in the early Cretaceous of Asia. Now, all of these larger dinosaurs are characterized by having reduced their fingers to only two digits. Now these giant Tyrannosaurus sized dinosaurs from the late Cretaceous likely arose from the more Allosaurus sized ancestors of the middle to late Cretaceous, such as the dinosaur Timolingia from Asia. During the later Cretaceous here in Utah, we have two uh, Tyrannosaurids, which lived around 70 million years ago in southern Utah. But of course, it's the iconic Tyrannosaurus rex that everybody thinks about. This was the mightiest carnivorous dinosaur of all time. Despite its humble origins as a chicken-sized dinosaur in, in the Jurassic, by the end of the Cretaceous, this beast ruled the landscape. Tyrannosaurus rex is found in the late Cretaceous Hell Creek formation, but it's been found from other late Cretaceous aged formations in the American West. 
Initially named in 1906, Tyrannosaurus rex has become the most famous of the large sauriosaurs. The three best known specimens include Sioux, the Sioux specimen, uh, which is on display at the, in Chicago at the Field Museum, AMNH 5027, which is on display in New York at the American Museum of Natural History, and then there's the recently restored holotype on display at the Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh. Now you'll note with all of these displays that Tyrannosaurus rex is posed with its back straight, but when Tyrannosaurus rex went on display for the first time, it was shown with its head up and tail dragging behind. Now when Tyrannosaurus rex was going to be mounted, the American Museum had two specimens that they thought they might be nice to have them fighting each other. The original idea for the mount was to have one specimen in a crouching pose while the other one would be rearing up. It was inspired by the Charles Knight painting of two Allosaurus fighting each other. Now the two dinosaurs would be uh, the feature of a new rotundum planned for the museum. However, with the outbreak of the Great Depression, only the rearing up Tyrannosaurus rex was put on display. The height of the Tyrannosaurus rex was inspiring, and other museums, when they designed exhibits, copied this pose. And this can be seen in some of the old archival photographs of various museum displays from the American and Carnegie Museums. Now today the dinosaur is reconstructed with a more agile pose, with the tail straight back, which would help the animal to run with those powerful muscles that attach uh, from the tail to the femur or upper leg bone. All right, now we're going to move on to some really strange oddball Suriosaurians. This includes the ostrich-like bird mimic dinosaurs, the ornithomimids. The ornithomimids were a slender ostrich-like uh, theropod which unlike other theropods we've seen were so far were likely omnivores and they lacked teeth. Struthiomimus, which means ostrich mimic, was a late Cretaceous dinosaur that featured uh, long arms and a really swift looking limb proportions. This dinosaur is known from the late Cretaceous of North America. One of the most bizarre and amazing theropods is the giant Dinosaurus, which was discovered in the early Cretaceous of Mongolia by famed Polish paleontologist Sophie Kurla Korwaskia, which featured these giant clawed arms. And that was all that was known of this strange dinosaur. Then in 2013, new specimens of Dinocharius started to give us a better picture at what these giant dinosaurs might have looked like. When poachers working in Mongolia left behind a vandalized dinosaur quarry, scientists were able to recover a skeleton that featured a large giant hump. When the poached skulls were recovered on the black market in Europe after being illegally exported out of Mongolia, they were returned to Mongolia and scientists published on the skull, which was bizarre in that this dinosaur lacked teeth, and the strange skull was flat, much like a pelican's or like skull. Not really what you would expect from those giant clawed arms. Dinosaurus was likely an omnivore or even a plant-eating dinosaur. Number eight, the Manoraptor. This is the next group of theropod dinosaurs, and they're all recognized by having a unique feature of the hand. They have a wrist that flexes downward, like this, rather than pronating or flexing toward the digits of the hand, like our hands do. Now this weird flexure of the wrist, this is also found in birds, and it's used when they fold their wings under their bodies. Now, while feathers have been found in other theropods, they tend to be fuzzy, fluffy, furry-like feathers. In Manoraptorans, we see complex feathers that may have been used for sexual display or species identification, like modern birds. 
The first group of Manoraptorans are the Ovaraptosauria, which are a group of dinosaurs predominantly found in Asia during the Cretaceous. But new specimens have been discovered in the Cretaceous of North America as well. Clodopteryx is known from the early Cretaceous of Asia. It's a chicken-sized dinosaur that lacked teeth. The bony tail was reduced, and it was supported by long tail feathers. These feathers are not just fuzz or spines, but long filaments of keratin that most, more closely resemble modern feathers. The skeleton also preserves some amazing gastroliths, belly stones in the forestomach, which is also found in modern birds, but also other dinosaurs. The skull was also very bird-like, more with a beak than jagged teeth that we saw with the other theropods. The best known of the Ovaraptosaurians is Ovaraptor, or Sidipati, uh, from the late Cretaceous of Mongolia. Now, several beautiful specimens have been found preserved on nests of eggs. I've combined these two genera here because there's some confusion under whether they should belong to a single genus or not. The initial skull of Ovaraptor discovered in the 1920s was rather poorly preserved. And when American scientists returned to Mongolia in the 1990s, they found a better preserved skull, which depicted a larger crest. And as such, appeared to represent a different animal they named City Patty. Since there has been some debate if these skulls are just variations in preservation or closely related genera, or if they're indeed separate genera. So for now, I'm just going to group them together. Ovaraptor and Sidipedi uh, was a emu-sized dinosaur that lacked teeth. They're found in the early Cretaceous of Mongolia, and during the late Cretaceous of Asia. They got really, really big, exemplified by the gigantic Gigantoraptor. Here in North America, Ovaraptosaurians are rather rare, but include the emu-sized Canathias, found in late Cretaceous of Alberta and North Dakota. Falcreus is known from Utah, discovered in the early Cretaceous Cedar Mountain Formation. Lindsay Zano, a professor in North Carolina, has done a lot of work on this dinosaur. From her research, Falcreus was a small, slender dinosaur that exhibited some advanced features, including those swivel wrists. The teeth were not sharp and likely supported an omnivore diet. But the really bizarre Therizinosaurians are found in the late Cretaceous, with the strangely towering North Ronchius from New Mexico and Therizinosaurus from Mongolia. These were giant, big bird-like dinosaurs with long, slender claws on their hands, three on each hand. They are now placed within the Manoraptoran group because of the origin of these strange dinosaurs from Falcreus, an early Cretaceous dinosaur, and they don't appear to be closely related to the Ornithomimids and Ovaraptors, of which they kind of appear similar to. Hence, there are three separate groups of theropod dinosaurs that adapted to a more vegetarian diet from a carnivorous diet but they kept their large claws on their hands. You, Manoraptora, this is the tip of our cladogram. Near the top branch of our dinosaurs, before we get to birds, the you, Manoraptora, include the closest dinosaurs to relatives to birds. As such, they're particularly important in the study of the origin of birds, and we'll spend some time with this group later on. For now, let's see who are the members of the Eumanoraptoran group of theropod dinosaurs. Now, it may seem strange, but the first theropod we'll discuss that belongs to this group is the Jurassic tiny dinosaur, Compthananchthys. It's known from the late Jurassic of Germany. Now, Compthananchthys is a tiny dinosaur. And as we've seen with other groups of theropods, they'll get bigger over, with time. But Compthananchthys is important because this very bird-like dinosaur is found in the same deposits as the oldest bird, Archaeopteryx, which means that 
among the very oldest eumeneraptorans do we see the origin of the birds. However, this group of dinosaurs continued to evolve and diversify for 90 million years. Another late Jurassic eumeneraptoran is known from the late Jurassic Morrison formation. Uh, it's, it's an amazing little fossil called Ornitholestes. Now, Ornitholestes is a slender, small, uh, velociraptor-like dinosaur from the late Jurassic of North America. Now, there's some debate whether um, Ornitholestes was a eumeneraptoran, or if it might have been more closely related to other Surliosaurians, which would mean that it's more closely related to Tyrannosaurus rex than it is to birds. And there are a number of small Surliosaurians in the late Jurassic Morrison Formation, which most researchers place within the Surliosaurian group. More specimens of these smaller, late Jurassic carnivorous dinosaurs like Ornitholestes might help to delimitate these relationships, especially if they preserve the wrist, which is such an important characteristic. Now, most of the well-known Eumeneraptoran dinosaurs are small pigeon-sized to turkey-sized dinosaurs. They include Mononychus from the late Cretaceous of Mongolia, which had a single finger. All it could do was point its adorable little finger at you. Other small-bodied eumeneraptorans include the cute little Bambi raptor from the late Cretaceous of North America. It shows the characteristic swivel wrist and the big toe claw on the foot. The tail was also very stiff, and these little dinosaurs closely resembled birds. Now, the most famous of the eumeneraptorans is Velociraptor from the early Cretaceous of Asia. Now, the first thing is that these were pretty small dinosaurs, about the size of a living emu, despite all those giants depicted in Jurassic Park. Velociraptor was a small dinosaur. It was actually selected for by Michael Crichton when he wrote the book, Jurassic Park, because he liked the sound of it, Velociraptor. And when the movie came out, several large eumeneraptorans had been discovered that were, that were larger than a Velociraptor. But eumeneraptorans as a group are rather small dinosaurs, especially when you compare them to Tyrannosaurus rex. Eumeneraptorans, such as Velociraptor, are closely related to birds. Evidence of feathers are found on small tubercles that are found along the ulna in Velociraptor, indicating that Velociraptor had long pinnate feathers that extended from its forearms, which in life would resemble wings. So not only did the movie Jurassic Park fail to depict the correct size of the dinosaur, they also made them plucked naked. Some of the larger eumeneraptorans include the very swift-looking Deinonychus from the early Cretaceous of Montana. When it was discovered, the fossil led uh, to the re-understanding of the close relationship between dinosaurs and birds by its discoverer, John Alstrom. Deinonychus was a delicate, agile dinosaur. Unlike the big, clumbering dinosaurs that we've seen, with the sauropods, for example. This one had a body that made it look like it could fly with those wrist bones, the toe claws, the really slender limb bones, and that stiff, long, elegant tail. And finally, we have the early Cretaceous Utah raptor, the largest of the eumeneraptorans, which is found in the Cedar Mountain Formation in eastern Utah. Now, Utah raptor was the largest of the swift, bird-like dinosaurs. Okay, that was a lot of theropod dinosaurs to know about. So let's do a quick recap. The theropoda includes the second major group of saurischian dinosaurs and all are bipedal dinosaurs. These are the earliest of the theropoda from the late Triassic and early Jurassic. Neoceratosauria. These were the larger theropoda which become isolated in the southern hemisphere, where they become large during the late Cretaceous. The Tenuria. 
This includes the more advanced theropods, starting with the strange fish-eating dinosaurs, Baronyx and Spinosaurus. Avitheropoda. This includes the more advanced theropods, many of which resemble birds. Carnosauria. This is the group that includes the iconic Allosaurus and some of the climax predatory dinosaurs of the late Jurassic in the Northern Hemisphere. Cerliosauria. This group included tiny fluffy dinosaurs during the Jurassic, but during the late Cretaceous they become the giants that include Tyrannosaurus rex. Manoraptra. This group includes some of the swivel wrist dinosaurs, many of which resembled ostriches and giant turkeys with claws instead of wings. You, Manoraptra. <laughs> this group is the most closely related to modern birds. They rose during the Jurassic and include the feathered covered dinosaurs such as Velociraptor and Utah Raptor. They tended to be small and bird-like. All right, and the very last group of the Theropoda are the aves, the birds, which we'll examine more closely in the coming videos. All right, now you can assemble a cladogram of theropods leading to birds and detail some of the anatomical features that define each of these 10 groups of dinosaurs.